been talking about the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, praise God. We talked about last week. The main emphasis that we were trying to give to everybody is that there's certain things in the kingdom of God, amen, as far as the, the basics are concerned. We talked about the basics before, and you probably have basics on your paper, but we're actually what we're going to talk about tonight is the benefits. And I, I think that's up there, amen. We talked about the, the right side, praise God, being the basics. These are the things we went over last week. These things are pertinent to your salvation. Sal salvation, forgiveness, atonement, adoption, deliverance, praise God. These are things that you get just by becoming a Christian. And every one of us have those things, praise God. As a matter of fact, we, we kind of started with salvation on purpose because you find out that one of the things that the devil is constantly going to challenge you about is are you really saved or are you still saved? Or, you know, or did, how you know you didn't, Lord? How you know you're not like one of the people that said, Lord, Lord, did we do many mighty work? He said, I never knew. You know, there's a lot of things that you could do. But what we need to understand is that when the cross, when Jesus went to the cross, he said, it is finished. Did anybody know what finished me? When he said it's finished, there ain't nothing more you can do to it. And there ain't nothing you can take from it. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you have everything on that right side. Where you find out tonight, we're going to start on the left side. We said these are the benefits, and and you got to realize that when you get it, that's like when you get a job. You get a job and pay good money and don't have any benefits. How many realize that's a bad job? Because if you get hurt, you can't go to work. You ain't got no insurance. You ain't got nothing to come to you, praise God. Or your children doesn't have anything. You got to buy your own stuff, praise God. So sometimes the benefits are worth the job. Sometimes the benefits are worth the job, praise God. Amen. And I understand, praise God, that a lot of things, amen, in life are the same way. Well, it's the same way with your Christianity. It doesn't just come with basics. It comes with benefits. Just because you're saved, there's certain things you can have. Go ahead to the next slide. Praise God. Amen. And the first thing you right across from salvation is faith. Praise God. Amen. Now, uh, <clears throat> we tell you, people will tell you when you come to Christ, amen, if you have faith to believe, praise God, you can be saved. And, you know, we, we quote Romans 10, amen, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. And the way we say it, we almost make you think that faith is something that you do. Yeah. And, and, and it sounds like, well, I believe God and I trusted Jesus. And you know, and the emphasis get on that. And don't get me wrong. Yes, you did. But you got to ask yourself, where did that faith really come from? If you go to Romans 12 and 3, most of us read it before. The Bible says, what the, and so I'm going to be going through these, and I'll probably be reading. So if you, if you want to turn there quickly, that's fine. But I'm going to read them aloud anyway. He says, for I say, but through the grace given unto me, that every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Everybody see that? Don't get too, don't get too heady. Don't stick your head and nose up in the air. Why? He said, but to think soberly, according as God according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Everybody see that? Yeah. Now what does it say? It said God dealt to every man. Now I'm going to add that to it say every saved man. Now why would you say that? Because unsaved people don't have it. Yeah. But if you're a Christian and you gave your life to, to Jesus, maybe you don't have all the faith that you want, but you have a metron. That's what the word is. It's a metron. You have a major measure. You have a designated amount of faith, praise God, to get you in. Now, the reason that's good news is because how many times have you heard people say, oh, we ourselves have said, I wish I had faith for that. Honey, if you say, you've got faith for that. Amen. Amen. God said he gave to every man the metro or, or the meter or the measurement of faith. That's how you got in. You couldn't have been a Christian if you didn't have faith. Actually, it's, it's coming in as point eight. Praise God. It's faith. Faith. Amen. Y'all heard, y'all heard, man. Y'all heard TD. No, favor ain't faith. Favor ain't faith. And it's not. You better be glad it's not. Hallelujah. You say, I want what I deserve. No, you don't. Not in the kingdom of God, you don't. Because you don't deserve nothing. What you deserve is death, hell, and the grave. <laughs> That's what we deserve. But because of the price 
of the, the, uh, the cross of Jesus Christ, we don't have to receive that. But praise God. The Bible lets us know when we talk about favor. Now, now, it's interesting because in the Old Testament, favor, praise God, is, is the fact, praise God, of, of, of well, let's turn it. Let's, let's go to the scripture. Let me give you a scripture. In, in uh, Proverbs 22 and 1, it says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. In other words, favor is better than silver and gold. Right. Favor is better than money. Yes. Ask Jesus. Yes. Jesus was broke. Hey. Amen. And the treasurer was Judas, and he was stealing. But I ain't never seen Jesus worry about how his needs were going to be provided. When he needed food, he multiplied. Somebody say hallelujah. When he needed taxes, he said, Peter, go catch a fish. So God don't need, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I ain't telling you, amen. God don't need your job to do what he needs to do. Say, hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Righteousness. Praise God. Now, usually when we do our confession of faith, a lot of people, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, uh, we, say, we say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Praise God. People say, well, wait a minute, man. You the righteousness of God? I mean, that's kind of a bold statement, don't you think? I mean, you look at me and say, well, who, who are you, Pastor? They say, I'm the righteousness of God. You'd be like, well, right. Sure you are. But Scripture says, according to, amen, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 21, which is where we got it in our confession, the Bible said, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, here's something you want to uh, put in your notes. You can't do right to be right. You got to be right to do right. Now, that sounds like a simple statement, but you're going to need this in your Christianity. It's because you know how many people are trying to be right by just doing the right thing? But if you don't have the right attitude, if you don't have the right nature, and if God isn't the product for why you're doing it, then the thing that you're doing doesn't make you a righteous person. Amen. See, God's righteousness is so high above our righteousness that if we did righteous, we lived righteously for the rest of our life, we still wouldn't be able to earn it. How do we apply it? Well, I know how Abraham applied it. Abraham believed God. The Bible said it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Galatians 3 and 6 said, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him, for righteousness. Praise God. So how do I apply this righteousness? Number one, I got to believe. I got to first believe I got it. Somebody say amen. amen. If you don't apply faith, that's why I'm glad faith was at the top. Because if you don't believe God, you're right. even though you are saved, and even though righteousness might be within you, it's never going to be activated, and it's never going to be applied. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. And people are never going to be drawn to it. I say amen. Amen. If I was going, if you know what, if I get, if I got, if I get stuck on this point, that I don't finish. I don't care. All right. All right. I really don't. All right. Because the thing that's lacking in the people of God is peace. peace. We just can't seem to have peace. We're so constantly worried. We're so constantly afraid. We don't seem to be satisfied. Praise God, we're not getting anywhere. And you know, we always say, well, God, if this one more thing was done. Amen. You, you need that verse. I'm going to record it again. It's Colossians 3.15. It says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Peace accomplished at the cross. Peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you. But in order for it to be applied, accomplished, applied, basics, benefits. In order for it to be applied, he said, let it rule. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why doesn't God make it rule? He said, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, wait a minute, we go to the next. We said prosperity, praise God. Amen, amen. So you find out, amen, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. If you don't have that verse, get it. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. Amen. The last one is healing. Now, I purposely say this for last because for some reason this seems to be the hardest thing for us to grasp. Because, you know, unlike everything else, healing Amen. When you think of healing, what I want you to think of is salvation. 
It's a message. Why do you want to take a salvation? Because, you know, when you got saved, most people, when we got saved, we understood the concept that even though we gave our life to Jesus, we didn't feel saved. Sometimes we did stuff go, man, I don't even know if I'm saved. Thinking like that. I might not have acted saved today. I know I'm yeah. saved. Yeah. No. If we take that same kind of faith with our healing. Because usually if we don't feel healed, yeah. we don't say we're healed. Amen. But just like you didn't feel saved but you said you were saved, yeah. if you don't feel healed, you still are the healer. Jesus said, the, the Bible said that by his strike we are healed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Peter said by his strike we were healed. Yeah. So healing is there. It's there. Just because you don't feel it. Amen. Why? Because it hasn't been applied. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right uh, tell her, Sister Lorenzo, I said, be here. She said, I am. Amen. Now, I know she was going through in her body, but she said, I am. I, I like that because I am who God says I am. Amen. I have what God says I have. Yeah. I can do what God says I can do because yeah. if I start limiting it into my own mind, I'm going to have a problem. Amen. We don't have time to go into all of it. I'm, I'm ending with this because, praise God, we just, we just kind of ran out of time. And I couldn't, I couldn't have enough time if I tore down 24 pieces across. Why? Because there's always more to say. But James 5 and 13 says, If any among you afflicted, let him pray. Somebody say amen. amen. If any afflicted, let the person that's afflicted pray. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can pray for you. But the Bible doesn't say my praying for you alleviates your prayers. Amen. Number one, if you sit, you pray. You want somebody to pray with you? That's different. You want somebody to pray for you? That does not mean you don't pray. Amen. The Bible says if you're afflicted, pray. Now, he was talking to Christians. You mean Christians get afflicted? Obviously so. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Because sometimes we afflict ourselves. Oh, we ain't got time. We ain't got time. Amen. 14 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him pray over him, anoint him with all the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the 15. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. You know what it is? It's a humbling factor. It's a humility thing. It means you got to get out of yourself and possibly go to somebody that you normally don't deal with and have them pray with you. And God is establishing fellowship and healing in one shot. Everybody stand on your feet. Praise God. Somebody give God a high praise. Give God a high praise.